Welcome to Downtown Traveler's Rest where there's so much going on right now from the Swamp Rabbit Trail to many new businesses opening up, outdoor activities, and the best farmer's market you'll see around. And so one of these places in Downtown Traveler's Rest is the tasting room. From their craft beers to wine, they have a lot going on. Let's go and learn more about them and see if we can't get a little cheese to go with our wine. This is Donna Barber with the J. Michael Manley team at Keller Williams Greenville Upstate. And today we're all the way up in Traveler's Rest, or as people say, TR. TR. <laughs> and we are here with Christine Seiler. Christine is the owner of the tasting room here in the heart of downtown Traveler's Rest. So today we're going to learn a little bit more about her business. And Christine, tell us a little bit, what is your background in this industry and, and what made you want to pursue purchasing the tasting room? Okay, well I've always been um, a big fan of wine and have enjoyed drinking it over the years. But about two and a half years ago, shortly after I moved here to Greenville, um, I took a job for fun here in the tasting room working for the previous owner and started really learning more and more about wine and all the different grapes and the varietals and the different regions in the world that produce these amazing wines. And so I jokingly one day said to the previous owner, hey, if you ever decide you want out, I want first rights of refusal. And then he said he wanted out. <laughs> And so then I looked at pursuing this. Um, I wasn't planning to buy a business when I moved here to Greenville, um, but this all just kind of fell into place and it fit my passion. And so I studied and became a level one SOM and purchased the tasting room and here I am. So Christine, a unique thing happened to you. You just <laughs> mentioned that you purchased the business Yet, what we uh, know now is that you purchased it March 1st of 2020 and then a few weeks later uh, we learned that we had a bit of a global pandemic on our hands. So tell us how you managed to navigate through that and are <laughs> continuing to work through that as we move along. Yeah, obviously when I bought the business March 1st, um, that wasn't even on the radar at that point and I had just hired four new people and so I had one who was with the previous owner and four new people and literally two weeks after I opened we received news from the governor that we needed to shut down the on-premise drinking part of the business. We could still do retail but we couldn't serve by the glass and have people come drink here themselves. So I immediately had to furlough my entire staff. Some of them had only worked one shift um, and take over everything by myself, including I had to furlough the previous owner who was going to work with me on a consulting basis. But without that type of business, I couldn't afford to do that. So it became sink or swim time and I expanded the number of days we were open. I expanded the number of hours and I worked them all by myself to just handle the retail side of the business. We, uh, I say we, but I was the only one here, um, started curbside delivery. Um, we enhanced our social media presence through Facebook and Instagram. My oldest daughter does all of our social media and she did a phenomenal job of letting people know that we were open, that people could come call in their orders. We would deliver it down to the curb for them. And we just punted at that point. And did you mention something at one time about you did something involving Zoom or continue to? So um, the first month, obviously, all we could do was the retail side of things. But one of the things I had done before we got shut down is I started a wine club and it's an experience-based wine club. So you pay an annual membership fee and you get to attend wine tasting events and participate in other memorable wine experiences. So since we could no longer do those types of things here on premise, 
I started virtual wine tastings. And so my wine club members were uh, the ones who were eligible to sign up for those first and they bought every spot every time I did it. So yeah. by April, I was averaging three virtual wine tasting events a month. Wow. And yes, we use both Facebook Live and the Zoom technology to be able to connect to those wine club members who are joining us virtually after they came and picked up their wine samples. Looking around the tasting room here, you obviously have a phenomenal selection of different wines and, and craft beer. Uh, so tell us, what are some of the current popular trends or popular labels, uh, brands that you sell that, that people seem to enjoy? Okay, well first of all, let me just clarify something and that is we try to specialize in small production vineyard wines, which means um, we don't carry a lot of mass produced wines so for us small production is 3,000 cases or less annually so some of the wines that we're really seeing a lot of movement on people getting really excited about um, are some of our northern Italian whites um, people seem to really like those they have a lot of minerality a lot of crispness and during the summer months they're very drinkable um, some people sometimes call them porch sippers because they're so easy to drink in the hot weather. Um, some other things that we've really noticed, rosés are just now starting to taper off. Um, they were very big during the summer and now as we're moving into, we finally have some fall weather and we're gonna see a big uptake in the uh, red wines that are being consumed. Um, a couple of ones that we wanna just showcase real quick. Um, on the white side, this is a, a northern Italian white. It is right at uh, northern Italy where it meets the German border. And this is a Pinot Bianco, which is a kind of what they call a derivative of Pinot Noir. It's a, a grape that derived from the Pinot Noir grape, but it is a white grape and it's just a lovely white wine. Uh, we have just become one of the very few carriers of hazel fern wines. They're located in Willamette Valley, Oregon. They make, of all their wines, under 3,000 cases a year. So we've talked a lot about wine and craft beer, yet your place, especially with some of the restrictions lifting up now, slowly lifting up, yet lifting up, <laughs> Uh, what are you seeing uh, the public uh, use your place for and also obviously what you're using it for as well? So again, we are still following all of the governor mandates and we still can only uh, have 50% capacity within the shop but we're very fortunate in the sense that our tables are very spread out naturally. We have an outside seating area with the deck and the sidewalk area, as well as we have this, the, what we call our fireplace room. And we use these different spaces, obviously for just the daily by the glass sales, but we also are finding that we get small groups that want a place to either have a business meeting, uh, maybe a networking session. Uh, we had Ashley Brickner, who does her Fabulous Five networking group come, uh, and so we were able to accommodate that. We do get some people, if they have, let's say, a rehearsal dinner, a birthday celebration, again, as long as we can meet the guidelines and they can stay socially distanced, um, then we can consider letting them use our space. And you have some live music now as well? So we're starting to try some new things. We, we had to put everything on hold when COVID hit, and now we're starting to slowly test out some of the things that we wanted to do long term, such as, as you mentioned, have live music. We've done it twice so far. Our goal is to have some element of live music once a week. We've got live music this Saturday, and then after that, we have booked a fabulous guitar uh, singer who is going to be playing every Thursday night here from 6 to 9. And then if you notice behind you, we've installed a 65 inch television. Not that it will be on many times, but we're hoping to get be able to show the Clemson games and let people sit in here with a nice beer or a glass of wine to watch the game. So if a small group of friends wanted to meet up here at the tasting room, uh, what are you uh, 
allowed to do by standards and guidelines and everything as far as food goes. Okay, so uh, we're not a restaurant, so we don't have that type of licensure. Um, however, we do carry prepackaged cheeses, uh, charcuterie, crackers, and um, some locally crafted chocolate. So people can order those and mix and match, and we give them a cutting board, and they can kind of do picnic style themselves. Or um, because we're not a restaurant, we're fine if people want to bring in their own food. If they go down to Sidewalls Pizza and decide to get a pizza and bring it back here, they are welcome to do so. If someone wants to learn more about the tasting room, where can they go and find you online and also throughout social media? So online we have a website. It is www.thetastingroomtr.com. Um, we are also on Facebook. Again, it needs to be the tasting room of Traveler's Rest. And then Instagram, which is tasting room TR. Okay. So that way people can come and find out what we're doing. We post our events through that as well as all the new products that we bring in throughout the week. We learned a lot about the tasting room today and we appreciate Christine and her time. And uh, I'm about to head home with some of this chocolate and also uh, some wine. And yes, I did find some cheese to go with that wine. So check them out online, social media. Meet your friends here after work or on the weekend. Listen to some live music or just simply have a glass or two and catch up. It's all here at the tasting room and Traveler's Rest. Until then, we'll see you next time.